Are you sick of those damn political crusaders? The anti-libertarian libertarian party? Sick of the violence and coercion that makes up the status servile society with seemingly no escape? Are you looking for real practical solutions to increase your personal freedom and your invulnerability to coercion? If so, kick off your shoes, come inside the polyethylene A tent, and let's talk Vanu. Join your hosts, Shane and Kyle, as they further explore this freedom strategy and develop it into the modern day. You're listening to the Vanu Podcast. And welcome to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane. I'm Jason. And you. And I'm Jason. Hey, there you go. I wasn't sure if I, I didn't I didn't uh, <laughs> fill him in before the show, but I guess you've listened to enough of them. You uh, you get the drill. So that's good. That's good. So since coming to the primary courses <laughs> upon individuals, this podcast, everything found on the website, is covered by Bipcot's no government license, as well as reuse and modification to anyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more by visiting bipcod.org. So, again, I've got to alter the damn introduction because we're supposed to be live on Fascist Tube. We aren't. Uh, this is a pre recorded uh, video discussion. Once again, a, a video episode of the Vonnie podcast. Uh, eventually, I'll get that figured out. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I haven't changed any settings on Open Broadcaster. And, uh, you know, it's worked. See, I, had it, I had it figured out. Um, unfortunately, I guess. I don't know what's uh, what's going on. If it's network connection issues or, or what it is, so um, we'll, 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 we'll do a live stream again sometime. It's 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 the man keeping us down. That's what it is. But uh, you know we, you know our, the enemy never sleeps, right? The state never sleeps. So we aren't gonna <laughs> we aren't just going to uh, not not uh, you know record an episode because uh, the uh, the internet gods aren't cooperating or the streaming gods aren't cooperating. So um, so yeah, don't leave any questions in chat because there is no chat. Um, don't share the stream around because there is no stream. Um, I guess just share this video around after the fact. We do appreciate it. So. Um, you're <laughs> telling them not to share the stream. It won't matter because the stream will be there and this won't come out until tomorrow. That is true. Yeah. So just worth it. We have worthless things to start that episode. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as you heard, I've got uh, Jason Booth and Jason Hansa with me. Um, so yeah, welcome back to the podcast, guys. For uh, for those who uh, um, everyone knows Jason Booth for sure, and everyone should know Hansa um, if they listen to the episodes we recorded um, at the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest. Uh, he joined us for an episode there, and he's also been with me on uh, on the, you know at least handful handful of uh, the uh, the uh, vlogs. Uh, for the end of the journey to Acapulco. So um, welcome back to the podcast, guys. It's uh, great to have you. Um, just, I guess I'll go ahead and make one other comment. Um, that's, uh, yes, Jason, Henza, and I are both in the same house, and we're on different computers and different Skype accounts and all that. Um, but, uh, so yeah, hopefully there's no background noise or anything like that. But uh, how, how are things going, guys? Awesome for me. I'm cold as shit. It's not even that cold, really. It's only like 54 degrees, but it's 54 degrees and foggy, and I'm still stuck in California while these guys are in Mexico complaining about 90 degree temperatures. Bastards. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I wouldn't know how that cold thing is. At least not for two days. Damn it. Yeah, two days. Two days, and then I'll be uh, heading back to uh, Central Illinois for the holidays. And then I'll uh, fly back to Austin beginning of January. I'll work for a month, and uh, then I'll be heading back here to uh, Acapulco for the uh, Freedom Festivals uh, and the Freedom Conferences. So, um, yeah, I'll be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I looked at the uh, weather for Des Moines, Iowa, where I'll be flying into, and then also in Illinois. And I guess it's not as bad as it typically is. Um, you know, like the at nights, it's only getting down like the 25 or 30s. I mean, it's not negatives yet, so that's. I, I guess a positive, but uh, yeah, not looking forward to that. Not looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing family, but I don't know. I I don't want to go back to the states. I just don't want to go back to the states. <laughs> no one wants to get back to the states. Back yeah. back to the land of the oppressed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
So, yeah. but not not forever though, not forever. And and I guess the it, the, the the positive thing is um, for for those who followed this uh, entire journey so far, I'll be I'll be back at Taos Camp only for like a, for like six weeks this time. Um, so that'll be uh, it'll be really really awesome, and it'll be December, so they they shouldn't be booked up at all. So I should just be able to book all the way through, and they won't care because I'll probably be the only one there again. Uh, so that'll be a uh, uh, that'll be awesome. So some more uh, wilderness fano experience, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, all sorts of uh, cool things to look forward to uh, for, for me personally and also uh, for you guys uh, as you, you get to examine another case study of, uh, of, uh, of Vani. So I guess, uh, do you guys have any uh, anything you want to talk about here before we get rolling or uh, uh, anything uh, relevant? Relevant? No. But what about Irrelevant. Oh, yeah, uh, representative, Re public representative Steve King asked the head of Google why his iPhone wasn't working during a congressional hearing. Really? Yeah. So he asked for like technical support. A bit. He basically asked for technical support. Like he asked why his iPhone was was malfunctioning, and the the guy replied that was made by a different company, and like a bunch of people laughed at him. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, those are our, wait for the human those race. Are, those are our best and brightest guys, our elected representatives. Yeah, and it's yeah, I mean it's it's <laughs> whether it's uh, an iPhone or whether it's uh, Bitcoin or encryption or whatever it is, uh, I always mm -hmm. find it hilarious when these uh, when these assholes you know try to put forth common sense regulation uh, when they don't even understand what the hell <laughs> they, they don't know anything about that technology. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's always it's always entertaining. And uh, it reminds me of that meme that goes around so often where it's, uh, I think it was the uh, Facebook, like uh, I think it was the, uh, the Facebook hearings. And uh, it was like this, it was uh, like this picture of, uh, like supposed to be like a picture of a congressman's computer. And it's got like the 37,000 add-ons to like uh, Internet Explorer from like 2000. Um, <laughs> it's not, it's probably not that inaccurate. Uh, probably not that inaccurate. But uh, <sighs> Anything else? Uh, anything else, guys? Or should we go ahead and get get on to uh, to the good stuff? Actually, maybe we could uh, tease the Patreons with maybe a little gossip after the show about the local community here. What do you think? Sure. So, oh, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, little, it's a little, little, gossip little gossip for the patrons. Yeah, yeah, a little gossip for the patrons. You know, uh, feed the crowd out there that uh, is feeding you. Sure, sure. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> we could do that. Yeah, why not? Say at patreon.com forward slash Vanu. And uh, <clears throat> we'll uh, put out another uh, bo uh, bonus piece of content or uh, some, you know, bonus content for you. Um, good idea, Jason. Good idea. Certainly a good idea. So um, I guess the, the only other thing I was going to mention was um, – ah, screw it. I'll save that till the end. Uh, yeah, we, we've talked, we've, we've rambled enough for now, so we'll go ahead and uh, get on with it. So I want to do a couple live streams before uh, leaving Acapulco, and I thought it'd be wise to spend one discussing uh, some of the struggles involved when building a community. Uh, I know we've talked about it in a hypothetical format before, but I think Kenza and I can offer some uh, relevant observations and experiences uh, from our time in Acapulco. Obviously, his is, uh, you know, much more, uh, much longer than mine. But, uh, you know, just being here for, uh, for, for a month or a month and a half uh, has, uh, has been enlightening. Uh, to say the least, uh, for, for many reasons. So here's a plan for the show. Uh, we'll, we'll, we will uh, review some definitions. We'll take a look at what Rayo said about the strategy of uh, you know setting up local congregations. Uh, we'll provide some insight from Acapulco and uh, I guess whatever else we get to. So uh, definitions, uh, local congregations, uh, it's a freedom strategy geared towards like-minded in individuals moving to the same locale in an effort to take over the culture of the state, etc. Uh, an intentional community, is a planned community designed from the start to have a high degree of social cohesion and teamwork. Uh, the members of an intentional community typically hold a common social, political, religious, or spiritual vision and often follow an alternative lifestyle. So for local congregations, uh, now keep in mind this was before the fascist state project. I think this article was from 1965 <clears throat> when he was just kind of making these, uh, these suggestions for, uh, for self-seeking. So um, he did kind of, uh, you know, Rayo at this time back in 1965, um, obviously he still had, uh, he wasn't uh, <laughs> swearing off everybody like he was in 1974, so he was at least maybe kind of open to the idea of uh, something like the, uh, the Free State Project. So um, it's worth, worth putting out there that, you know, this was still maybe a little bit in, you know, Rayo's days where he might have been a controlled schizophrenic, maybe not completely um, outside the realm of political crusading. Um, but, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, that's uh, certainly worth mentioning. The intentional community, that's not going to be 
<clears throat> super relevant um, for today's topic, but uh, I, I put it there just as kind of a as a contrast. Because um, yeah, it's I mean it's not really intentional community here. Like there's no there's no farm. Uh, you know we're trying to be self sufficient. I mean there is obviously the uh, the common uh, apolitical uh, you know goals and alternative lifestyles, but um, I wouldn't say it's an intentional community. Um, so yeah, the focus of this will be local congregations. So <clears throat> I guess, um, let me see here if I can direct a question over to, to, to one of you guys about uh, local congregations, but um, <clears throat> I guess, wait, what do you, what do you, uh, yeah, what are you guys' thoughts on the uh, definitions? Any uh, comments thus far? <laughs> well, first off, definitions are always wonderful because it puts us on the same page, but I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to get ahead of us by talking about local congregations and trying to take over somebody else's society, right? Trying to take yeah, over. So, I mean, to, yeah, I mean, yeah. I I don't like the idea. I I, I don't either. We'll we'll uh, obviously we'll we, we've covered this before, so we're not jumping completely ahead. If if this is one of the for your first times listening to the Volney podcast, or you haven't listened to this episode, definitely go back to season two uh, and check it out, where we talked about local congregations um, as part of the local areas of liberty mini series. But um, yeah, I mean I I'm kind of skeptical about the uh, the proposition anyway, and obviously if it involves political crusading, um, if the if the if the pure intention is to move move a bunch of libertarians or anarchists and to to a singular area uh, in order to take over the state by running for office, I think that's a really bad um, idea uh, for a lot of reasons. So, um, but maybe maybe there's a, maybe there's a, poss a possible application that we could uh, we could suss out here in this uh, in this episode. But I, I guess let's go ahead and get to what uh, what Rayo had to say here. Um, so this is from his article, "Self-Seeking Takeover a State." Uh, so we're going to get some more, def uh, I guess, uh, more of a definition here. Um, from Rayo and also one of his correspondents. So he says, uh, quote, two basic approaches have been previously outlined for creating localized areas of freedom, the sovereign free port and the intentional community. A third alternative might be called a local congregation. A correspondent in Illinois, who prefers not to be identified, suggests, quote, a state could be taken over by everyone moving to one state, a concentration of effort and voice could be obtained. A state like Oregon would be ideal, low population, varied topography and climate, coastal state for shipping, etc. There'd still be federal laws, though, unless freedom was so well sold that these states might try secession, end quote. Uh, he adds that such an undertaking should be executed without fanfare to avoid giving rise to conspiracy theories within the state. <laughs> I would add that such an endeavor, by its very nature, uh, might be executed informally as the net summation of many independent decisions by individuals. Central planning or direction would be prohibited by the number of people uh, involved, end quote. So I guess we can go ahead and stop there. So we, we kind of get a little more insight into a potential <laughs> definition for a, for, a, uh, for a local congregation. Um, <clears throat> now... Well I go ahead, Jason. <laughs> uh, uh, just what what he said about such undertaking should be done without fan without fanfare. Like I I think that that's what the quote was. Like I j that screams FSP to me. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like they are, they like they 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 championed it and championed it and championed it and championed it, and they're like they're bragging about it, and it's just there. There's so much fanfare and almost a, like an almost like a um. Uh, and, and and idolatry to it, like it, like the the like the FSP is some sort of end all be all idol. Go to the FSP, worship the FSP, and you'll be free. And just, it's like it's like it's like Rail wrote that, knowing it would happen. Yeah, I don't know. Like, see, I, I guess my my. I guess view on this on this portion is I, I, I like there there are a couple art I guess a couple articles that Rayo wrote like this one where um, like it sucks seeing Rayo fall back into this controlled schizophrenia where he's actually kind mm -hmm. of seriously considering these ideas. Um, so I mean I, I I think useful yeah useful advice but I mean um, I guess it was his correspondent that mentioned secession um, mm -hmm. at least uh, at least for right now so. Um, we still got a little more to uh, a little more to cover though. But uh, Henzi, you got anything so far? No, I'm good. You guys are covering it all. Cool. All right, all right. Um, well, I guess I guess the, there there could be one other one other comment on the fanfare aspect. Um, I guess if it's purely political from the start, um, you're not competing with the state, right? I mean, you're you're still 
um, participating in the uh, within the apparatus. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't think there's really too much danger there. Like with the Free State Project, I don't think anyone was ever really. Um, I don't think the state ever really felt too threatened about that. Um, I mean, obviously, like they cel- they celebrated anarchist politicians who served for like two years and then just you know, never got voted back in. But um, I mean. I don't think for a political movement like that, it really makes too, too big of a difference to keep it under, you know, keep it under wraps. But um, I don't know if, if, if you know, 5,000 anarchists, you know, kind of, you know, have this really, I guess, spontaneous idea without a whole lot of direction to, you know, move to, uh, oh, I don't know, Costa Rica or something. Um, you know, it probably would probably would be wise to keep it under, under the table, um, you know, if it's going to be a mass migration like that. Because um, we know how... Oh, uh, people! People view uh, mass migrations, right, with uh, the caravans and such. So, um, so yeah, if it's gonna be a pure, purely political thing, it's pr- probably not too big of a deal to, to advertise it. And uh, if it's gonna be like a political migration like that, but um, if it's uh, yeah, if it's a little more <clears throat> risky, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe try to uh, try to do that a little better. But uh, all right, let's get back to it. Um, Quote, a local congregation may be either inside or outside, i.e. to a locality within America or to a foreign country. Possible objectives of a local congregation, achieve a complete uh, uh, laissez-faire society, secure a base for educational efforts, acquire local political control, though not independence, uh, facilitate economic trade and information exchange. Um, End quote. I guess we'll just stop there. Um, But yeah, those are, you know, some certainly some some positive aspirations, right? Uh, um, a laissez-faire society, a base for educational efforts. Um, mm-hmm. You know that uh, that Vanu home base, where it's more than just a Vanu home base. You have uh, uh, a home base with uh, like-minded individuals. Um, yeah, a, a, a Taz or a Taz or a Paz. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. Um, now, as far as the local political control part, again, I mean, we've we've already spoken to that. Um, I, I do think the, uh, the the parentheses here, though not independence, is good because it's much like setting up an, an intentional community or a permanent autonomous zone. Um, like, yeah, uh, philosophically, um, you know, you may declare that a free zone, but you aren't going to be. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, you. you you can declare the independence. Um, you can obviously declare the independence uh, from the uh, from the overall, uh, you know, the servile society in the state. But um, unfortunately, they might they might not uh, particularly honor that. So the the uh, independence would be, I guess, viewed one way. <laughs> I guess you could say. So um, let's see here. Uh, I guess we'll get back to it. Quote: Since most taxation and coercive interference with commerce is inflicted by the federal government, substantial freedom could not be achieved through an inside migration, excluding secession. But educational benefits might be considerable. The statewide elimination of socialized schools would end one massive source of collectivist indoctrination, greatly increasing the number of people re- receptive to libertarian ideas. And a few rational libertarian congressmen could, could use publicity accessible to them for presenting rational ideas. End quote. So there, I just want to make that one comment. That's Ray kind of uh, flirts too close with uh, political crusading here for my liking. But. Uh, yeah, you know, those are, I guess, I guess those could be advantages, yeah, if, uh, if such a, you know, local congregation was uh, was achieved. Uh, now, for Mexico, I don't think, um, well, I guess it depends if you're, if it's going to be in, uh, you know, uh, inside or outside um, relocation. Because if it's outside, I mean, I don't think it would really be a, a worthwhile objective for anarchists to move to Mexico with the goal of trying to abolish public schools here. Like, sure, you know, teach the locals about unschooling and such, but... Um, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Do you, do you think that the <laughs> go to a foreign country to try to abolish one of their public institutions? <laughs> uh, Mexico, in particular, I think it's a terrible idea, considering that they don't care if your kids go to school or not. So, yeah, you should just like let them be as they're they're going along. Uh, I, I the the teaching classes and entitled class here, you're born in. So, you know, they they kind of. They just feel entitled to that job, so attacking that kind of industry would probably bring a lot of heat on you. It's probably not the best idea. Oh yeah, right, oh, yeah. right. I forgot about that. Um, I mean, they, they have the uh, teacher strikes and protests here and such. Um, so yeah, I remember you mentioning something about that. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be. Worse. Yeah, those are fantastic. They they like commandeer buses. They just steal buses and they take over toll plazas and they collect all the money that they want for their causes. And the state and the cops just watch them do it and never bother them with it. It's it's really cool to watch. Wow, <laughs> that would be fantastic to see. Yeah, yeah. Now we did see um, when we were coming through here. Well, it was one of the last toll booths um, 
yeah, you were trying to pull up to the toll, and the guy, like some guy, some you know, bandito stopped you and took the toll. Um, I don't know if that was, uh, that, I don't know if that was the teachers, but um. he he asked for half the toll, by the way, half the toll, and then someone in front of him lifted up the gate that was wearing a mask too. There was like uh, fifteen people wearing masks, and there was probably five or six cops watching them take tolls. Yeah, cops. Yeah, cops were just on the other side, just watching them steal the tolls. Like it was, it was comical. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were probably uh, tipping the cops to leave them alone. Sure. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So, um, all right. Uh, let's get back to it here. So he's going to talk about, uh, an, I guess, an inside migration. Which I guess we'll we'll go ahead and skip that part because we're not talking about an inside migration here. We're talking mm. uh, outside. Um, although the dynamics will, or I guess the what we'll discuss will will be applicable to both. But I'm going to jump forward to the outside uh, portion here. So he says, "quote uh, What about moving outside of the United States? Not for the purpose of starting a brand new community, as preform has suggested, but with the intent of locating in and eventually becoming a dominant influence within some small existing nation." How quickly could, say, 1,000 libertarian activists alter a small English-speaking nation of 200,000 population? A few promising spots in the world are being studied with this in mind. Uh, what location do you recommend? What are its merits? End quote. So, now, <clears throat> with, I guess, the definition that was uh, laid out with local congregations, what he says there makes perfect sense, but I think there's a little... I don't, I don't even think there's a... I don't even think there's really a single concerted goal or effort um, for the anarchists who have moved to Acapulco. Um, I think people come down here for different reasons. I don't think there's, I don't think there's really one, you know, like we just want to live free. I think that's kind of maybe that might be the one common thing. I don't think there's really some larger goal of, you know, you know, getting 200,000 anarchists down here to take over Mexico. I don't think that's, uh, it's really in the cards. <laughs> No, um, it, no one's really kind of like stated that goal in a while of trying to get a bunch of anarchists to move into one area. It was just, it was a nice climate. People decided to move down here um, and they got together and they realized the cash-based society is basically the second realm and nobody pays taxes and they get their neighbor to work for anything, uh, you know, affordable prices. I can't say anything, but very affordable prices. So that's, that's kind of what is very attractive about this place is that it's a lot freer economically than its states are sure <clears throat> yeah yeah exactly exactly so <clears throat> so that's uh, what Rayo had to say about local congregations again just to reiterate just uh getting individuals together uh working towards uh, uh you know some sort of a goal such as uh, uh whether it's uh political if it's just uh i guess uh i guess a, a, a strategic relocation whatever whatever it may be so um, I guess let's go ahead and talk. Uh, I guess get you know, talk about some of this insight from Acapulco. So I guess uh, since I'm since I'm kind of new here and uh, mm -hmm. I so obviously have, uh, have not met everyone yet and don't know, there's still a few folks that I've talked about regularly who I still have no idea who they are. So uh, it makes uh, makes things a little complicated for me. But I guess um, you know generally as, as generally as possible, I guess uh, tell us a bit about. Um, the community, or I guess the communities here in Acapulco, and uh, I guess. Um, yeah, just give us some, some background information, if you could. Sure thing. So every year, uh, Anarchopoco happens, and they have Anarchoforco uh, right after it, which is a decentralized event. Anarchopoco is more centralized. You sit in, like, a classroom. People talk at you all day long, and then you meet people out, and you kind of, like, make your contacts there. Anarchoforco is more like a workshop type of thing. You set up beach parties or do whatever you want, and you just post it on schedule and do your thing. Well, when we do that every year, we get waves of travelers down here that – you know, they save up some money, and when they get there, get here, they realize that they can stay here two, three, four, six months at a time, and we call those people waves. We get waves of people down here, or, or waves of um, of community members uh, coming down here and staying, and they they come back every year. They're kind of perennial and uh, hang out and stuff like that. Well, a lot of people have big goals in mind when they come to Anarcha Poco and Anarcha Forco and contacts. They these really ideas uh, where they want to um, uh, you know, uh, with their ideas so they get a bunch of people to buy into their idea am I off topic here Am I still good no. my microphone's on right yeah sorry about that uh, and they get all these like uh, you know um, people to invest in their their projects and sometimes they get a little bit over leveraged and stuff like that um, and 
eventually, you know, kind of get a bad rap and people get kind of screwed and, you know, uh, people don't always get along because people get cheated right away by someone else's idea that they're trying to build. So, uh, you know, this just happens once a year where we get waves. People come down here, a lot of honest people. Okay, yeah, it's uh, cutting out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's cut, cutting it out. Oh, Sorry, boy. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, so, yeah, they, uh, they they come down here and try to sell their wares and uh, try to become, you know, community members. And down here just to experience Acapulco, to live amongst uh, like-minded individuals and stuff like that, and eventually people get cheap and it becomes a bunch of infighting. Um, set up cutting now. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, cutting out, it's so cut, cutting out, for cutting out really bad. Might be, uh, uh, might be that microphone. The, uh, re reset the mic cable here. Hopefully it won't cut out again. Cool. Yeah, yeah so uh, that, that creates a lot of the infighting and the, uh, the ins um, what do you call it, the instability. Kind of. Yeah, but there's always community activities everybody's really nice to each other most of the time um uh, rarely does someone do something so outrageous that they just can't participate anymore but you know this community has its challenges um, but people do come here basically for the second realm uh, what we we define as a second realm what they just look at as a cash-based society anarchists haven't really you know studied part of Bono yet where they run in a different way Vaccineers are are anarchists. They don't like the government. They don't like people. Well, anyway, uh, the government does so little for them. Why should they take any of their money? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it was cutting out just a little bit there, but um, mm -hmm. what was it? Was I was I was at least able to, to grasp most of it. The the idea is that there are multiple multiple communities. Um, a lot of people here, and a lot of the locals here, are already very anarchistic. Um, I remember one of the locals here is like. 10 minutes after I got here, we were telling about our our, uh, <clears throat> our adventure in uh, Mexico City with uh, you know two two or I guess uh, two attempted extortions Three. within uh, within about five minutes, and uh, you can find that Patreon.com uh, forward first slash one. <clears throat> first one. Oh well, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, the border crossing. Oh, yeah. yeah, we had the border crossing too, where they they tried to stop us and harass us. So. Yeah, there was three. Right, that's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, like one of the locals when he told about that, he's like, "Oh, fuck the cops, man!" It's like, "Yeah, there you go. Okay, I don't like this guy. This guy, cool." <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm there. I'm I'm there with you. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say a lot of the locals are very anarchistic. Um, very much so. Very much so. Um, all right. So, I guess uh, where, where where do we want to go from here? Um, I guess we could talk about. Um, you know, um, I guess one, one thing that was kind of surprising for me, um, and for the, for the people watching on camera, I'm looking at Hens and I'm also looking back at the computer too, so I do apologize. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess one thing that was kind of surprising, because I, I, I figured, I mean, I talked about before, you know, it's not, it's not wise to let control it's schizophrenics in the second realms, so, you know, like I, I, that's, I, I no. kind of had that revelation a year ago. I want to talk to Reagan Keeley about it, so we did an episode. Um, but it's uh, very, very important. So it's just something I, I, that I, I kind of came around to last year. Um, you know, kind of the, um, <clears throat> I guess the the self war, the self care and uh, you know the personal growth and um, all that sort of stuff is very, very important um, because I think uh, um, you know some experiences here have uh, <laughs> have further confirmed that uh, that you. you well, when you're when you're starting community with somebody, you're, you're uh, strategically uh, I can't ever say that fucking word. Uh, when you're relocating to uh, somewhere else with a bunch of people or with with some people, um, you really want to make sure that they're, <clears throat> you know, sound in the head, <laughs> right? Um, I think that's uh, that's yeah. certainly certainly uh, certainly necessary. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, the the thing that that was kind of surprising was, it wasn't. Um, oh, I mean, it wasn't. <clears throat> I don't know what I really expect. I mean, I I, I kind of uh, theoretically I thought there'd be maybe you know some interpersonal squabbling when you get when you get human beings together. There's going to be conflict. Mm -hmm. That's just a given. Um, but I was kind of surprised that it was, you know, anarchists, uh, you know, who, who you know abide by the non-aggression principle or you know proper or who are for private property. Um, it seems like the most common form of, I guess, the shit behavior that happens here is you know fraud and coercion. Um, like those have kind of been the major incidents. Sure, the, the major ones, but um, you know that's been kind of uh, surprising that with a bunch of proprietary anarchists, the problem you have is violations of property rights. 
um, seems to be the most common thing. Well, a lot of people, um, the, the reason why the community splits is because people want to work on their humanitarianism and try to rehab some of these, uh, some of these people who don't necessarily understand the principles of freedom, don't understand the responsibilities of freedom, and um, they don't necessarily know how to conduct themselves when they're this free. So they tend to make a lot of big mistakes and a lot of uh, hurt a lot of individuals out here and they there is no line that they care about crossing they're basically a statist when you think about it mm -hmm. because they just don't care about crossing that line the only thing that uh they don't do that the state does uh well the state does is they uh they create um a process to cross lines and these people just don't have a process just whatever they feel on a whim however angry they get or whatever like that then they start crossing lines with people yeah <clears throat> yeah. yeah that that's something um, uh, Jeremy Hengeller and I talked about on an episode of Abolition Abstractions, is that the the anarcho -liber anarcho libertarian movement um, it attracts a lot of people that are narcissistic and egotistical, but it also attracts a lot of people that that suffer from things like Asperger syndrome, um, and and these sort of weak mental fortitude that allows people to manipulate them. Um, but it also attracts people that don't have the mental strength to, um, like, physically control themselves uh, when they get very emotional. A lot, because you know, a, a lot of people that that are in or that 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 claim to 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 be anarchists or libertarians aren't anarchists or libertarians. You know, most of them are just statists that traded parties for economic systems. Um, and, and a lot of them are still, uh, I, I don't want to say mentally there, but they're still emotionally there. Like they haven't made the full transfer to really understand what libertarianism or what libertarianism or, or anarchism truly means. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. Um, I definitely think that's fair. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, anarchists running around calling themselves, uh, you know, politicians and such. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, claiming um, than the actions uh, showing differently. So, and I do want to apologize if you hear explosions in the background. It's okay. Um, you know, nothing's under attack. It's just uh, <laughs> just firecrackers. Apparently, the entire month of December, just all day long, it's just firecrackers. So. Calm, calm down, Shane's mom. Calm down. <laughs> and I don't think, yeah. I don't think they got their, I don't think they got their permits for those fireworks. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the one thing that seems to be readily available here is gunpowder <laughs> in like large quantities. These people start from from seven and thirty in the morning until like two thirty at night. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway. <clears throat> now, I, I guess uh, uh, get, getting back to it here. Another thing I noticed beyond just um, uh, you know, kind of the you know, kind of being surprised by the um, by the violation of person and property was, I guess it wasn't. It's not really surprising because I've dealt with this with sp sp certain libertarians in the past. I mean, uh, people do really <laughs> shitty things or they have really terrible ideas, and uh, you, know, you try to tell this cult following that they're God. It's not a god and that they're actually, you know, fucking scammers and fraudsters and they're, you know, lying to you. Uh, when you try to tell these people these things, they oftentimes don't believe you. Um, and uh, yep. they continue to get dragged along, you know, from scam to scam to scam, um, from legal defense fund to legal defense fund. And, uh, you know, the scams just continue. Um, regardless of how much ev evidence is put forth, regardless of what medium it's in, if it's an article or, you know, podcast format, it doesn't matter. There's just people that will refuse to believe <laughs> that their great man could be anything but that so that was surprising yep. too um as you you've talked that, about uh you know your interactions with individuals mm -hmm. you've been pretty open about it um that uh you, you you try to be open about it so people don't get hurt by them again but they just people just don't really don't seem, really to, seem want to want to believe it okay yeah it's not inside damn sorry Okay, I think you're good now. They're humanitarian. Okay, their humanitarian side just uh, gets to them, and they, they want to save these people. You know, they don't want to, you know, they've already kind of found freedom. They've moved here, and you don't want to let them go. You know, it's it's so hard to get people to move down here. Uh, there, there's probably only like 40 or 50 of us down here, mm -hmm. and um, a, a lot of times, you know, um, most of us, including myself, thinks everyone matters, even even, even that, you know, they, they are what they are. Uh, we, we don't 
not value them as individuals. It's just that, you know, we have our own moral value and stuff like that. So um, I believe in heart too. I ignored some of the warning signs and I've been burnt. Um, actually, probably one of the most burnt pe people here in Acapulco, uh, I would have to say. Um, so like, uh, yeah, just the, these people, you know, they leave who out with or something like that. Dude, like people start to go inclusive. Hey, if you're hanging out with these these three or four people here. Uh, they they have scammed. They are multiple offenders in the community here. We're not going to talk to you if these are your friends and, and that type of situation. And uh, people don't like that either because it feels socially co coercive and people usually fight against that. Like once you have a little pressure on you, you push back against that. So people automatically just turn down. They don't care about the warnings. Their humanitarian selves are just too open up to, you know, believe in the principles of freedom. And th these people just, some of them have no idea what freedom is or just, just simply don't care. It's about them. It, it's sociopathic, narcissistic behavior. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting, and I, I guess it leads me to, uh, to to another thing. I wrote about this in my book when it came to intentional communities, but um, you know, I, I really think if if uh, whether it's going to be intentional community or local congregation, like something here in Acapulco, if these if if these things are going to be long term, um, you know, I, I think um, you know some sort of you know, dispute resolution system or, you know, some sort of standard operating procedure or something like that would be a good idea um, to eliminate arbitrariness, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, arbit and that's not even, it's, they violate person and property. It should just be, you know, okay, well, it's done. You know, we aren't going to, we aren't going to associate with them anymore. It should just be that easy, but um, it's not. Um, unfortunately, it's not. Now, like with intentional community, you're all moving on to the same tract of land. Yeah, in that situation, yeah, I mean, pr maybe if, it, if verbally or, you know, maybe even written contracts, um, you know, talking about the, the dispute resolution system that's going to be um, in effect there on the property. Um, now, for local congregations, it's a little different. And then obviously, people's motivations are, are, are different. Like for me, I don't, if they're controlled schizophrenic or, you know, a validated person in property, I probably won't give them much time. Some people would like to try as you said kind of rehab them or you know they're the human humanitarian sort of thing um so <clears throat> people have different objectives they have different uh i guess needs and desires i don't like those two words very much sounds very nvc but um you know they've got different needs and desires and some people would just have to try to help and a lot of these folks really aren't aren't uh you know worth worth saving to to put it really really crudely um but just the individuality um that's what makes that's what makes it so hard for these communities to to uh, to develop and, and to be sustainable is individuality <laughs> that's really what it comes down to and i think that's a great thing but it's also frustrating huh yeah it, it's a little frustrating uh especially when you're one of the people that have been violated and uh it, can you hear me now okay you're getting some i'm gonna have to get rid of this yeah <laughs> i'm gonna have to get rid of this yeah. sorry guys Sorry, sorry, we're going to get a little bit of uh, weird sounds, but let's uh, move on to... All right, how, do I, how am I sounding now? Okay, Much there you go. No, like, no, yeah, no static noise. Okay, cool. <clears throat> All right, great. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so can you rephrase the, uh, the question again? I lost my train of thought with that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, yeah. basically I was just getting to... Um, yeah, and when you're not yeah. talking, if you could mute... So I don't hear myself. Sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so basically, what I was saying was, um, people have different uh, different goals, needs, desires, all of these things. Some 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 are gonna, some are going to want to try to help. Some are, some are going to be more like us, where you know, you know, fuck this guy. Like I'm not going to associate with him anymore. Like it's just that easy. Like it's not not a whole lot of deliberation. It's just violated person and property. Okay, done. Um, just people have different you know different uh, different desires, and it's hard. Um, makes these these communities so hard to develop and, and, and maintain uh, from just the individuality. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, basically, I, I've been violated on more more than one occasion uh, by different individuals, and uh, it, it just kills me because uh, people will continue to be their friends after they understand, know the violation, how bad it has been, and they they just ignore. Uh, completely what happens to me it makes me feel like that there is no justice in the anarchist community and I can do whatever I want take justice oh. into my own hands which is the last thing I want to do uh, but I, I feel like I want to look to the community and say can you guys help me out a little bit and 
you know, this is the problem I'm having. This is a problem other people have been having. And it's, it's not just, you know, by myself, it, it's multiple people that are having problems with these individuals. And uh, typically people shut off and they don't want to, don't want to help out with that situation. So it's extremely frustrating and disheartening uh, looking for justice within the anarchist community. That's, that's, yeah. Uh, that's been an issue for a long time. Um, and, and I think one of the aspects that anarchists or individualists miss is when you have a, a large collection or, or a community of individualists, you have to have a little bit of collectivism with it, you know, in, in order to create an actual community. If you don't have that little bit of collectivism, if you don't have that little bit of, um, common common mindedness or, or common goals or or any sort of ability to get any sort of justice in your community you don't have a community you just have a bunch of individuals that live near each other like you you can't you can't build if you don't have cohesiveness um and and there there needs to be something i mean there needs to be some sort of i know i know with, with vanu coin that that being built into vanu coin is is the reputation system uh, there, there needs to be like an dark anarcho, lanes. yes, or dar dark lands. Yeah, there needs to be like a, like an anarcho Yelp for for individuals, and you can be like, oh yeah, this guy's a dick. He did this and this and this. He's only you know a three star. He's only got a, a, you know a, a three star reputation or or something like that. Um, and I know God, that sounds like really oppressive, but there needs to be some sort of means of social justice, like. These people, I, I know the individual you're talking about. Um, it's the same sort of individual that keeps running for office in New Mexico, uh, and 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 there's other ones that are like him that c claiming the title of anarchist or voluntarist or libertarian. It when people interact with with that individual, that title becomes an umbrella in their opinion for the whole community. So there needs to be some sort of system or some sort of, of method by which one can gain social justice or or economic justice or or god damn even even go all the way back to, to Ben Stone and we could start talking about vigilante justice. You know, these these sort of things need, these sort of discussions need to happen if if any sort of community is ever going to ever going to be created. Yeah, I, I, I think vigilante justice is probably one of the worst kinds of justice. I would rather depend, like, lean on my peers a little uh -huh. bit because for me personally, I could take it too far. You know, I, I what I may see as justice for myself may not necessarily mm -hmm. be just punishment for the individual. Yeah, and that's that's where that's where the, the system would come in, the, the, the checks and balances. Like, you, be, even being vigilante justice... Uh, you would still be subjected to vigilante justice uh, from from your other peers. Like if if you went trying to get justice from this person, or you and a group of friends would try to get justice from this person, and you went above and beyond, well, you would be subjected to the rest of the community. That's that's you know that would be your justice for going above and beyond. Right. Yeah. Yeah. E equal and equal and proportionate response. So. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that is there. But but again, you know, theoretically, like I <clears throat> talked about this back in 2015, you know, the private arbitration spirit resolution organizations, like the all the theoretical stuff is there. Theoretically, it sounds mm -hmm. it sounds great. It sounds great. But unfortunately, it just doesn't seem to manifest itself into reality too much. Well, um, people so. are people are afraid to have these conversations. You know, people people are are scared to put themselves out there and and to try and push the envelope um i mean we we did it uh, with the, the building the second home series when we talked to ben stone um like there were some people that were messaging me like hey you know you really shouldn't be saying this sort of thing blah 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 blah. aren't you scared well of course i'm a little scared but these conversations need to happen and and you know people people don't want to have them right yeah yeah, that is and that, uh, that is that's you know, definitely true. It's 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 unfortunate that and 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 this 
<clears throat> this complaint that I have that I've mm-hmm. said so many times before, you know, seeps into so many different areas within anarchism. Um, but it comes down to like, uh, you know, what you know, what podcasts and shows people listening to? Well, news cycle bullshit predominantly. Um, mm-hmm. You know, well, what's you know, what are what are people focusing you know their their attention to? Like, you know, what are what are the the topics of the anarchism that get you know most of the most attention? Well, um, you know, like unschooling and peaceful parenting and nonviolent communication and like all the stuff that I don't really care for too much. Um, <clears throat> but um, I mean, yeah, you, you look at the, it's, you look at the focus and. Um, yeah, it's not surprising that you know just it justice is a hard is a hard thing. It's a really hard thing. People are you know you know people's property and person and property and or property may be damaged. Um, it's not a fun subject to cover, right? Um, mm-hmm. Dealing with victims here. Um, so I, I guess I can understand, but at the same time, if <clears throat> if you're going to talk about encapsulating, if you're going to talk about libertopia, if you're going to talk about you know fill in whatever other uh, hypothetical utopian mm-hmm. free society, um, I mean. You got to talk about this. You got to. You got to oh, get these absolutely. things ironed absolutely. out. It's it that like Jason said when, at, at the beginning of his talk about the the community down there. Um, responsibility, right? I mean, I mean, freedom is fantastic, and, and anarchism is fantastic, but you have to have responsibility for your actions, and coming along with responsibility for your actions, responsibility for your, commun- your community, your 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 group, your your property right you have to have some means of holding people responsible or accountable for their actions yeah yeah i'm looking here as uh, the second second round book on strategy came to mind because i am working on getting that book published um paperback's ready to go just waiting waiting on uh mr Bodie to uh, get the uh, put the book cover done i'll get that out but i wanted to go back to second book on strategy here because i i think this is this is a really valuable text when when we when we're, we're talking about these subjects mm-hmm. so um basically i'll just read a little bit here uh, quote uh, and again this is second round book on strategy i'll put uh links in the show notes um quote internal justice systems are another example of shared services we're not going to progress into a utopian future where fraud theft and aggression disappear instead we have to find ways to, to provide conflict resolution enforcement and, rest, and restitution systems um, this requires ways to securely register contracts and retain evidence in case of future disagreements without risking that uninvited third parties gain any information. Uh, using these contract registries and evidence retention systems, affected parties can call on mediation and arbitration providers and hand over the facts necessary to decide the case. Combined with escrow and bonding services, enforcement, enforcement becomes feasible without having to rely on aggressive law enforcement in commercial settings. Furthermore, strong pseudonyms and reputation systems can provide means to reduce future risk of questionable actors and serve as a social or restraint against repeat violations um so um again you know theoretical i mean and then if even get into the idea of a trading post where um you know it's <clears throat> if you if you have to make the trade in person uh well you know proxy merchant can set up a trading table where you can't see you can't see each other um if you're passing along you know one physical good that fits in the hand you both put your hands through you put a hand through and you grab and then you grab the good and then you you know both go at the same time and go your, go your separate ways. Um, so it's ways to limit fraud, but what do you do when the, when the coercion of fraud happens? Well, again, we've got the theoretical here, but how does it actually work in reality? Because that's the most important mm-hmm. question. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem that it works too well at all. Well, uh, there there is a uh, someone down here working on Remedy Coin, which is uh, circulating uh, someone's violation of another person, or it could be someone's debt. Of another individual so say that a arbitration panel decides to get together here and uh, rule in favor of a plaintiff uh, they could actually create a fair amount of debt for that individual to pay back so that turns into a coin and that person uh, who uh, the plaintiff who actually uh, creates the coin uh, might be able to sell it off to other people and then the person who is the defendant in the situation would have to buy back all that coin before he can actually do business within the second realm like that that's just like one idea i've heard floated out there before which i found very interesting Mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't hate that idea yeah yeah and uh there's another um and i guess just another another thing here and this you know makes the anarchist community look bad um but you know we're talking about how um you know theoretic theoretical um you know it it works out fine but in reality it needs some work needs some discussion you know the things need to get ironed out um well (laughs) <laughs> um, when, we, when we're talking about um, 
let me see here. We're talking about like uh, the uh, the mob, or I guess the uh, the mafia. We we did a uh, this was a fun episode of the Building the Second Realm series <laughs> on the uh, on the mafia. Well, you know the mafia has their own internal dispute resolution system. Now, obviously, pro- uh, you know pr- uh, property and you know personal property are violated, but at the same time. Um, you know, they do have their own independence and, you know, internal justice system. So um, I'll make the recommendation again, you know, maybe take a look into, uh, you know, uh, into you know, the mafia and the Yakuza and figure out how their social structures um, are, you know, or I guess their, their social interactions are, um, I guess, uh, I guess uh, how, uh, how uh, disagreements are settled. As, uh, I guess don't they know. normally like cut people's hands off and murder them to death half the time? Or like threaten their families. That doesn't seem like a very good <laughs> resolution. My sure, sure. That, that's pure yeah. vigilanteism right there. That scares the living crap out of me. That's not a society I want to build. Oh right, no, no, I'm not, uh, not either. And obvi- <laughs> obviously, uh, yeah, obviously, smuggler and XYZ provide you know disclaimers, but they're just saying, hey, uh, you know, like they, it seems like they've, 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 they've had these organizations working for thousands of years. Maybe, maybe there's something we mm-hmm. can learn. From yeah, them. even, even, even the worst system is still worth looking at. Just, just for for the for the thought exercise alone, and it might trigger some thought. So, right. <sighs> yeah, I have to. Uh, yeah, I have to agree with that. It's worth looking at. I just, you know, when I look at it, I just don't look at it as like a, a viable option to do exactly what they're doing. <laughs> but maybe, uh, yeah, maybe well, no, you're, 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 different, you're, different, you're, different organizations, you know, took things to different different lengths. Because mm-hmm. Kyle, Kyle went through a bunch of different examples when we did that episode, and um, I mean, some of it was, you know, very, very, very bad. Um, not advisable for people who care about personal <laughs> property to do, but others, some of the other stuff, it's, it was kind of comical. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're, 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 you are you um, not really. It's just in their, uh, um, what do they call it? Next steps. Uh, there's an inter- insert, uh, insert kindness and strength into the world. Charity and justice are for you to do. Um, I, just, I, I like that. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I, yeah, I don't have, I don't have too much else. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of good material to pull from. Um, obviously all the anarcho-capitalist literature from the, you know, the mid 20th century that's, uh, that's out there. Um, read a lot of it. There's the uh, the uh, mini series that was done, or the the few part series that was done, uh, um, Law Without Governments, uh, a series on YouTube, very very good. And uh, then obviously second round book on strategy. They talk about the subject, um, and there's obviously a bunch of other sources as well. Um, but I, I I don't know. I, I think really I, I wanted to cover this because from being here, uh, from experiencing a community like this, I, or communities like this. Um, you know, it's it's good experience, and it gives some insight into the the real struggles. Um, and, you know what what what's uh you know what what the real struggles are with with trying to do these sorts of things. And I do think a, a discussion on, and you know it's 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 happened before. You know, the theoretical discussion, but I, I think you know practical discussions. You know, implementing it uh, needs to happen sooner rather than later because, uh, I mean, if if if, <laughs> if we can't solve our own disputes, then either the disputes go unresolved or there's only as far as I know, one other institution that, uh, you know, does that through monopolies. So, um, yeah, and I don't think it's uh, very anarchistic for anarchists to uh, utilize state services uh, when they can set it up themselves. But, uh, yeah, I guess um, what do you guys have uh, as far as uh, closing closing thoughts? It's been about uh, been about 45 or 50 minutes here. Um, but, uh, yeah, what, what are you guys' uh, closing thoughts as we begin to wrap this up? Well, I... I'm just going to say that that anarchists are individuals, or, or true anarchists are individuals. Uh, people that claim to be anarchists, they're not so individual. But any community, any intentional community, or, or any sort of <sighs> meetup between anarchists and, and libertarians and whatnot, they're, they're going to have issues. They're going to have issues. And the easiest way to resolve these issues is don't be a dick. Right? Use, use open communication – Calm down. Take your emotions out of it. Uh, you know, go go to a logical place, and and try to discuss it. And if you know you guys can't reach a conclusion, well, then it's time to go to other means. But try that first, right? Don't be a dick. You know, don't take things too personally. Sure, sure. Yeah, don't be a dick. Wise advice. Wise advice. Henzo, you got any uh, 
any uh, closing any, uh, thoughts? Because we we do have we do we're going to close out the main the main, the main uh, episode, episode, and then we're going to continue we're recording, going to recording, and we're going to, we're going to get into some some, into some Patreon stuff um, for 15, 20 minutes or so. Give uh, give the patrons a little uh, little mm-hmm. bonus content here. But uh, but yeah, hands any uh, any uh, closing thoughts for uh, I guess uh, our general audience. Absolutely. Uh, for me, down here, uh, starting a community uh, has been difficult. Getting along has been very difficult. Every in every settler that has come down here, every individual that's come down here matters. They have value. Uh, they're people. You know, they they may not fit in, but they they matter to me. Uh, they should matter to everybody else that's down here. They they shouldn't be considered like scum of the earth and. and like society would be better off without them. That isn't what I, I want people to think that, you know, if you come down here and screw people over, you don't matter anymore or something like that. You still matter. It's just you've got to come down here and understand uh, the ideas of freedom, the responsibility behind freedom. And when you get over leverage, don't keep digging that hole. Stop digging the hole and tell them I'm over leverage and it's to just stop the program, what you're doing before people get hurt worse, you know, uh, on these big ideas that you may have or, or perhaps, you know, the, the loans that you really need and stuff like that. Like, uh, there, there's got to be a point where you got to be honest with yourself so you don't hurt other people. So, you know, uh, this community matters more than anything to me. I, I've wanted to be here uh, over five years. I, I dreamt about this place. I used to go through Google streets and just drive the streets through my computer all winter long whenever it was like cold as hell outside. And I have obsessed about Acapulco for five years. I really wanted to be here. Um, so I'm making it happen regardless of the pain. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, and, and obviously, I mean, uh, there are, um, you know, we talked about the, the communities. Um, and then there's also, indiv- you know, anarchist individuals who just don't associate with anyone from the community, really. Um, you know, maybe other than, you know, on a, you know, rare occasion, um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe... Yeah, rare occasion maybe um, they'll associate with we'll have someone over or a couple people or something like that, but um, yeah, there's there's uh, yeah there's uh, there, there there's that too, but um, yeah, Jason, are you gonna, or uh, Booth, are you gonna step in there? Uh, no, no. Um, I just I wanted to drop a quick note uh, before we sign out for the for the recorded podcast. Um, Claws, whoever Claws is that tried to organize the Vanu meetup in Minnesota, mm. hit, hit hit us up on Facebook or or uh, email Shane at whatever his email address is. Shane will give it to you in just a second. Uh, we want to talk to you. Actually, hold on a second. Um, I did hear back from him on meetup. Oh, cool. Um, Even better. Yeah, I'm not going to read private personal messages uh-huh. here, but I heard back from him. Um, yeah, so hopefully at some point. Um, yeah, yeah, Klaus. If you're if you're uh, you know listening, uh, you know feel free. Uh, certainly love to uh, to chat with you sometime. So, um, all right. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for reminding me of that I definitely forgot. Definitely forgot. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that's I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Um, so yeah, for the uh, for the normal episode. Yeah, Jason. Jason, thank you for. Uh, for, for coming on and uh, chatting about this. I think it's an important uh, an important subject. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, I'll close it out and we'll get on to, uh, uh, on, on to the Patreon stuff. But, uh, yeah, this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Fonu. Uh, there are obviously a bunch of great titles on there, but I'd recommend Going Mobile, a terrific new and van life scene from the 1960s, uh, narrated by yours truly. Uh, Rayo's got some stuff in there. You can see, uh, you know, uh, way out of his van. Uh, you'll get to see a bunch of different case studies from people who, uh, you know, live this lifestyle uh, back when it was a little more difficult than it is today. Um, so uh, certainly do recommend checking that out. Uh, again, uh, that's audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu. Um, as I said, you can also subscribe to the Vanu podcast on Patreon and get exclusive content. Uh, that is patreon.com forward slash Vanu. And uh, tomorrow uh, on, uh, I guess, December 13th, I'll be back. Uh, well, this will come out on December 13th, so I guess it'll probably be uh, today. Um, so yeah, today I'll be back with uh, what I think will be a solo live stream. I'll take a look at the past year of my uh, pursuit of Vanu, and uh, I guess some of the uh, major lessons learned because it's been a pretty, <clears throat> pretty uh, crazy year for me. So uh, I think that's about it. So uh, thanks, guys, and uh, we will talk soon. Is it-
Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.